April 2nd, 2014. I prepared the uh, drawing paper last, uh, I think it was December. Uh, cut it, flattened it out, did the pencil outline for the drawing, but I didn't start inking until two days ago on March 31st, and then again yesterday. So the head is, uh, at least the face is done, the neck area, and about one quarter of the hair. This is the uh, photograph my murdered great-grandmother I am drawing from. And then I made three uh, enlargements from that. Her shoes, on her feet, her hands, and her face, head, which is what I'm doing this from. There's that. And when I did the enlargement of the hands, I was kind of just uh, blown away. Um, because uh, it brought out a kind of a richness of detail of her fingers I hadn't really seen in the smaller photocopy enlargement and in, and in the much smaller photo that I was working from, that I began with. Seeing all the, the folds and the contour shapes of her, the fingers and the structure of the hand between this one and the fingernails and so on brought her to life to me not literally but in a manner of speaking in a way that I hadn't thought about before I've always wondered what it was like for my grandfather she had three children who survived infancy all boys uh, one of them uh, had moved to Berlin and was married to a uh, Jewish woman from Lithuania her name was Hendel, his name was uh, Liebel. They had two children, a boy and a girl, one born in 1923 and one in the late 1920s. I'm assuming they were poor because he sold clothing out of their apartment in Berlin. And all four vanished into the abyss during the years of the Third Reich. The other son, aside from my grandpa Harry, was um, served in the Red Army and uh, survived and he lived, uh, he was a commercial photographer not a, a, a photo studio in uh, Tel Aviv in the post-war years died. Sometime around the same time my grandma Sarah died, uh, which was in 1981 in the Bronx, and it was her husband, my grandpa Harry, who was the third son of Zlata. And according to my mother, she told me this perhaps, I don't know, 10, 15 years ago, her father had corresponded with his mother all those years after he left Poland around 1903, and he never saw his mother again. So I, I wondered what it was like for him first to have never seen his mother again, but to have corresponded with her 1903, you know, into the, the teens, and then in the 20s, and then through the 30s, and then whoosh, the uh, German and Austrian uh, Nazis invaded Poland in 1939, and the correspondence would have come to an end sometime then, afterwards. Six years later, World War II ends, and all the reports come out about the, the death camps and, uh, in Poland, and then the, the concentration camps in uh, Germany and elsewhere, and um, I just wonder what that was like for him. Uh, his mother was probably born sometime around 1860-ish, and uh, she would have been elderly at the time uh, of the Nazi invasion. And uh, I also wonder how, how uh, she perished, how she was murdered. She might have died in the ghetto. She could have been shot there. She could have starved to death there. She might have been among the thousands of Bialystoker Jews who were uh, trained to the Treblinka death camp and gassed. There were several thousand Bialystok Jews who were also taken to a forest outside of Bialystok where they were shot to death. Regardless, this is my third and will be my final homage to her. I've depicted her in Showa Dreams, the largest work of the Under the Wings of God series, uh, which was completed in uh, 2001. And I also depicted her in this uh, work here called uh, Zlata the Righteous of Bialystok and her son Liebel who lived in Berlin. So the, the same uh, 
drawn from the same photo that I'm using for the uh, drawing for the mosaic here. There you have it, to be continued. Greetings, it is Sunday morning, April 20th, 2014, I, uh, Easter Day for the Christian community. The um, I pulled the film I had posted of this a couple of days ago because I reworked a whole number of sections of the my interpretative portrayal of Zlata's dress. So I didn't, uh, the, um, her head is untouched, ditto her uh, ankles and uh, feet, shoes, but um, so I'm refilming this now, Sunday morning. It is uh, Easter Day for the Christian community worldwide. Yesterday marked the uh, 71st anniversary of the start of the Warsaw Ghetto Uprising, which is really a, an attempt posthumously to put a... <sighs> instill some morale into Jewish history for what was otherwise, in reality, a completely bleak situation for the uh, then 50,000 or so Jews who were still alive in the Warsaw Ghetto at the time of the uh, this uh, final military operation by the Nazis uh, began April 19th, 1943, which really um, meant certain death for almost all of the uh, prisoners still alive in the ghetto. So to be continued, I pulled out uh, two pieces of wood I had pulled out of a dumpster last year, which will make a fabulous uh, um, pieces for the uh, exterior of the frame for the mosaic. Uh, I found so far, I think there's some smaller pieces too, two pieces from the uh, dismantled homage to Paviak prison frame. Those are the gold yellowish ones here, and one last piece of this hundred or so year old uh, uh, wood molding given to me by former Pioneer Square Art Studio mate Cecilia Cooney a few years ago. All the other sections of this were, were used, well I think there were three of them, used in the uh, frame of the fourth mosaic drawing combo Orthodox Jew under barbed wire. Olkusz, Poland, 1940. There is a film up of um, Cecilia visiting the studio here, I think it was in 2012, where she gives her responses as a Catholic to that particular uh, artwork. Anyway, to be continued, Zlata Barshevsky of Bialystok. Greetings, it is Sunday evening, April 27th. It is uh, Holocaust Remembrance Eve. Tomorrow day is Holocaust Remembrance Day. Uh, Erev Yom HaShoah in Hebrew for the Eve and Yom HaShoah day, tomorrow day. I'm giving one lecture this year for Holocaust Remembrance uh, Day, even though technically after sundown it'll be after the day is over, but that's fine. At the uh, uh, a Jewish community residence for seniors, elderly, Folks here in Seattle, I'll be giving the same lecture. Background to the uh, five monumental uh, mosaic drawing combos of the Under the Wings of God series as I gave uh, in a similar residence uh, near Boston where my mother lives uh, in early March. So this is now uh, entirely done with uh, two small exceptions. I have to finish carving out that to get this uh, piece of these pieces of metal in here. Same thing there and then I will um, be cutting down this to uh, probably not more than an inch all the way around rectilinear and then I will begin constructing the inside frame that will where the drawing will be placed after the mosaic is done so to be continued this is again April 27th greetings Tuesday night April 29th this is uh, from uh, storage uh, containers. Applesauce uh, jars work really well for this kind of uh, stuff. Uh, leftover pieces of wood from the 
uh, constructing the inside frames of the last couple of mosaic drawing combos, bringing me over here. The outside frame can be really wide in sections, but the inside frame needs to be like narrow like this to save as much room as possible for the mosaic. Although uh, I will have a few pieces like this just to add variety. What I'm trying to avoid is using wood like this, which is really new um, and boring. Um, the best wood I had for, I think I began with the uh, Life and Death in the Mosaic uh, from 2005 6. Life and Death in the Ghetto was from an old laundry. Um, wood from a laundry drying rack I had, which I tore apart because the wood was aged so beautifully, but I don't have any of that right now. I did uh, tear apart something I had bought. I'm not sure what it was for, maybe storing dishes uh, this afternoon. Horrible on the hands. I'm now wearing gloves. I've got to take out uh, dozens of uh, nails here using uh, pliers in this uh, wire cutting tool pliers. There you have it. One minute, 30 seconds. April 29th here. Whew. May 4th, just for the record. Uh, I just completed all well, this is before I begin the cleanup. And then I'm going to do another 30 second film with all of this stuff cleared off. Put away in various containers. Then I'll vacuum it and then I'll set the drawing down and uh, do another 30 second. So the inside, the outer inside frame is now done. Uh, it will have a bit more uh, work. Uh, there are some like really tiny gaps here and there. I'm gonna wanna go in with probably Q-tips and wood putty. And I haven't actually screwed any sections down. I'm gonna let the last sections completely dry first. I call it the outside inner frame because here's the outside outside frame and then the inside the outer inside frame once the mosaic is completely done in a few months then the drawing is reinserted then the plexiglass cut and put on top then this whole thing needs to be sealed in with pieces of wood going all the way around just like this which is a whole nother uh, whatever three four days worth of work there you have it and ask me to do this again. I always say that after I finish each one of these. So uh, Thursday evening, uh, May 8th here. So uh, first I did it in uh, pencil and then I went over it with a marking pen. So uh, similar to the uh, first section I did in the uh, Orthodox Jew under barbed wire, wire Olkush Poland 1940, where I began with a mosaic in the upper right in this case, I'm beginning also with a mosaic, with a, not with a mosaic, I'm sorry, with a menorah, like a candelabra. Except in the Orthodox Jew work, it was going upright, and here I've turned it sideways. Um, that is from a photo plate 85, page 85, in uh, Monica Krievska's book, Time of Stones, which I bought in Poland in the... Uh, 1984, I think it was published in 82 or 83, have to look that up again. Um, from a town, if I'm pronouncing this correctly, Sieniava, almost looks like Italian. Uh, and then uh, this part here is from a plate on page 76 from uh, uh, the city or town of uh, Tarnów which to me is more well known. And I did this section up here, upside down, with an unintended uh, thing of having these two Hebrew letters upside down look like go in English. So I may substitute something else in there later. His Grace, Reverend Brooke Rolston here. I'm delighted to see all that you've done to, to remember and to honor Zlata. Um, and to see the, the incredible color detail that you've put 
between her head and her feet. Uh, the, the Hebrew writing, the animal figures, uh, birds, fish. Can I point out something quite, in particular? Quite gorgeous. Yeah. Oh, how gorgeous. Yes. I couldn't help Birds it. with hats. <laughs> yeah. And one with yeah. a puppet also. Oh, and the, and, and the menorah. I, I'm loving the way the menorah is coming to life. Oh, thanks. With the gold background. Oh, yes. Um, and I like that you have made these out of more irregular pieces oh, yeah? of, uh, of mosaic glass. Oh, yes. Very good. You're going to get an A in your report card. Good oh, yeah. for me. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thanks. Done. Greetings. May 28th, Wednesday. It is about 7.30 or 7.35 p.m. Almost... Uh, out of uh, daylight here, and I don't have the uh, overhead uh, fluorescence on to keep the reflection down off the tiles. Um, I think it will turn out, though. Uh, the third section is now, a third section, I should say, is now done. And uh, I'm going to withhold commentary myself. I will just uh, do a quick view of what it inspired by. This is a uh, three-tiered candelabra. I bought four Six quid, 99p, at the um, Chest, Heart, and Stroke Scotland Charity Thrift Shop in Cooper, uh, Southeast Scotland. Uh, I think it was, uh, that must have been uh, May of 2012. It's good, a good gift to myself. And uh, there you have it, to be continued. So, right side up. There's Zlata, and uh, we shall proceed onward, upward, and so on. Viva! June 3rd. I've been working on it several hours, about two to four hours every day. It's coming along very slowly. We shall see how it turns out. We have uh, white letters that will be with a black background and black letters with white background. It could all end up looking like decorative patterning, which is fine. Um, and uh, just a there's the uh, previously done sections, upper right and top. So stay tuned. <laughs> Did you stop it? No. Oh, oh. <laughs> we're having intermission now. Time to Thank you.
That was wonderful, wunderbar. Greetings, it is July 18th, 2014. I am in my studio with um, Lucia Zelensky, yes. uh, American from Seattle, yes. whose um, parents were uh, Polish yes. and uh, her parents were both Dachau concentration camp survivors and on her mother's side, uh, she's uh, actually been researching very recently the fact that um, her uh, mother and family were uh, Polish Jewish, which mm -hmm. opens up a whole new realm of uh, yes, of everything about uh, one's life, knowledge about one's family and beyond. Oops. So, um, and we're with my uh, mosaic drawing and combo. I am the artist here. I'll say hi. Uh, depicting my the drawing, my murdered great grandmother, uh, Zlata Barshevsky of Bialystok, and. Um, Lucia is seeing this for the first time, and uh, she pointed out the uh, Mickey Mouse here and had an interesting uh, observation. I said, wait, <laughs> let's get this on film. I so just, you had a... Yeah, I mean, I just thought it sort of skews everything, doesn't it? <laughs> it, it, it skews everything, she says. But so why? Tell me, I'm going to walk around this way. Tell me why you think it, so I can see this from right side up, for, also for viewers' benefit. Well, how and why does it skew everything? Uh, it just doesn't, you know, it's like uh, the old cartoons in the Seattle Times of what doesn't belong, you know, um, what's different about this picture. The dice, too, are interesting, although I can kind of relate to the gamble of choice that might have, you know, been a psychological factor very different from what we experience in a gamble of choice in our lives, but, mm -hmm. um, At least those of us who are you know, not Mickey, in. Mickey just, uh, did Mickey just fall into the work? Did he sort of fall into the work? <laughs> like manna. <laughs> actually, flew it's in the just, window. That's funny. Like the late, um, Literally. Nobel literature Nobel Prize winner, Polish Jewish uh, writer from Warsaw, Isaac okay. Singer. He had a parakeet in his apartment, a very mm -hmm. famous story in the Upper West yeah. Side of Manhattan. Supposedly the parakeet <laughs> just flew, showed up in his windowsill one day. Mickey flew in here. Mickey flew in. Landed right here. We so, have had yeah. some high winds. We have had high winds, you yeah. Know. So I am in a, the state. I am pulling the viewer's leg here and yours too, <laughs> and mine as well. So, uh, um, so you think Mickey sets everything askew? Mickey kind of makes uh, the viewer think. Mickey looks like he's falling, you know, in perspective of your grandmother. Yeah. Great grandmother. Great grandmother. And uh, what does that do for you? That raises a so that makes that brings up a good question for me, for you to answer to. <laughs> <laughs> Mickey's falling. So falling. what does that symbolically represent then of Mickey's falling? Oh. Well, Mickey's always been, you know, kind of like a symbol of happiness, of joy. Mm -hmm. Hi, boys and girls, you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, I guess if he's falling, happiness could be falling away. Uh huh. You know? So that could be a. Sorry, my daughter's texting me. Or happiness fell away when I think about fell the away. Holocaust. I think about. Can you I can't imagine. I think about all the victims, Jewish and non Jewish, of the Nazis and fascists. There were people. Certainly, shtetl and countryside village villagers who grew up with no electricity, plumbing, and so on in the 20s right. and 30s, and would have had no knowledge of of movies. And I have no idea if my great grandmother Zlata ever went to a movie. But there were millions of others for whom, like in city life, for whom movies were, an, you know, like a common right. part of life, just true. like they were here in the pre-war years in the states, and who would have been very familiar with Mickey Mouse. So, um, um, so that's a good compare. I mean, that you know. So, uh, can I answer the question too? Sure. <laughs> so, <laughs> You're the artist. <laughs> True, but I'm, I'm always uh, up for hearing uh, interpret. Our interpretations are more important to me than whatever I wanna might wanna say. But I, I'll say this: that everything was upside down in people's lives. It's like you were telling me about your your mother, you know, a teenager in Dachau. Yes. And all these people were, were murdered and stuff. And yes. how much more can you have your life turned upside down than to be in a place like that? Okay. So um, upside down. And I have no idea. Zlata, how do you have any idea who Mickey Mouse was? She was very observant. Mm -hmm. But um, to me, it, it fits in the with the century 
the last century, the 20th century, and with the genocide that enveloped all of Europe. Mm-hmm. So, um, it, to, it, it, to me, uh, it fits. Thanks. Um, You're welcome. Um, before we, this gets overly long, um, you had a question about this. I did. So what do you is think this, this area is? This is the last section that I need to do, before, and then I'll start the grouting. Well, I'm curious. Is mm-hmm. this a an instrument, or is it a railroad track? Because... I mean, if you flipped it over, it could be, you know, like a glockenspiel or a uh, xylophone of some sort. Or it could be a railroad track because there were a lot of, you know, uh, transport trains to different camps and things like that. And so here's a railroad tie, right? Right. So this is probably a railroad track. That's correct. But it's interesting because I've been thinking of, just well, recently, of uh, you do mind reading on the side or what? <laughs> The last month, I've been, I've been, uh, I've been listening to um, old recordings by Tim Buckley, uh, an yeah. American singer-songwriter, who died of a heroin overdose in 1975, and, yeah. and 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 sometimes he performed solo in film clips uh, in the late, between 1967 or so, and when he died, and other times he had a backup group, and in some of the recordings on YouTube, it definitely to me it sounds like there's a xylophone in there. Mm. And I've been thinking, that's an instrument I'd really love to learn how to play. I play very piano. Um, and so that's funny that you, you wondered if that was a xylophone. It is, uh, it's intended to be railroad tracks. So I'm going to be doing, uh, I went downtown, photographed the railroad tracks uh, around uh, 4th and Jackson. Okay. And railroad tracks, and looking at photos I brought up on the internet of railroad tracks, even like into Auschwitz, like current photos, as well as old black and white photos from World War II or 1930s, railroad tracks. Have, they haven't really changed much. Sure. So um, you've got the basic thing of like these um, kind of wooden uh, support, I don't know what to call them, like bars or whatever, sure. and then you've got the the, um, the metal tracks. So that's what I'll be doing there. Um, with I think that'd be very appropriate. Yeah, and you know, y- you hit the nail on the head exactly because trains crisscrossed. I've told this to school audiences for years in my slide in PowerPoint. Mm-hmm. Trains crisscrossed all of Europe, day and night, winter, summer, spring, fall, carrying uh, prisoners to concentration and death camps. Um, you know, from every country in Western, Southern, Central, and Eastern Europe. So, anything What's else? What's your grandmother's name? Zlata. Zlata? Zlata. So we're at seven minutes, 40 seconds. I'd like the Include this really quickly. Uh, (laughs) Anything else you'd like to add? Jinkuyu Barzo, thank you very much. Tadaraba, that's Hebrew, thanks very much. Thank you. Okay, starting with the. Oh, call it about 10 o'clock on the clock and then going clockwise. That was the uh, fifth section here, the Muscovy Duck, based on a drawing I did of a Muscovy Duck in West Palm Beach, Florida. The uh, upper left, inspired by a black and white photograph of uh, flora plant forms in a Polish Jewish gravestone. Uh, I'd have to look up and see what city or town it was in from. Uh, Monica Krievska's book, Time of Stones, published, I believe, in 1982 in Warsaw by Interpress. The uh, seven-branched candelabra, or menorah, also from a Time of Stones photo of a Polish-Jewish gravestone. That's in upper right. This uh, uh, three-branched uh, candelabra uh, from a metal... Uh, Candelabra I bought at a uh, heart stroke and something or other charity thrift shop in Cooper, Scotland in 2012. Here we have a uh, Evan calling a Hebrew alphabet mishmash or mishmash depending on your preferred pronunciation of the Yiddish or maybe it's Yinglish. And the uh, last section was just uh, completed yesterday. Uh, two hands with thumbs nearly touching, fingers like that. Uh, the, from the kind of priestly 
blessing from ancient times, the Kohanim, and the name Segan, my family's surname, paternal name, is actually, uh, according to what I've looked up uh, and read, uh, like an assistant priest from uh, ancient times. Viewers of the Star Trek TV series will remember the uh, character Mr. Spock. I always want to say Dr. Spock, but Dr. Spock was actual physician. Mr. Spock doing this with one hand. I forget if he did it with his left or right. Something or other with Vulcan, something or other in the, in the sci-fi story. But uh, of note, the actor who played uh, Mr. Spock is uh, now, I think, 83-ish. Uh, Leonard Nimoy, American Jewish, and he himself starred in a 1991 movie called Never Forget, uh, which addressed a true... Uh, uh, account of a, uh, a court case uh, in which uh, professional Jew haters, Halleck deniers, were uh, pitted against a Hungarian uh, Jewish Auschwitz survivor whose family were all murdered at Auschwitz, gassed to death uh, in a court in uh, California. The Halleck uh, uh had offered this charge to anyone to prove that the gassings had happened, which of course there were millions at the Nazi uh, death and extermination uh, camps, uh, Auschwitz, Birkenau, Soberbor, Majdanek, Treblinka, Belzec. Belzec. So uh, I use my own hands for these even though I have a one photo, I have two photographs of one gravestone in the Jewish cemetery in Corfu, Kirkira, that I photograph which has this uh, imagery on it, and uh, there's also uh, at least several uh, uh, Polish Jewish gravestones in, uh, in the Time of Stones book that show the same imagery. Um, there you have it to be continued, just two sections left to do, and then the grouting will commence. Uh, August 7th, Thursday morning, I uh, propped up the uh, mosaic drawing combo. So the upper end is about, I don't know, maybe six, seven, eight inches higher than the bottom here where I'm standing. That's my knee. I'm on a ladder. I just wanted to get a uh, idea of what this looks like or will look like uh, vertically when it's installed on a, uh, on a wall, for example, at uh, any exhibits, art museums, galleries, college, university art galleries. So I'm up on the ladder now, holding my arm out as far as I can. That's Zlata Barshevsky again, my mother's murdered great-grandmother who lived in the Jewish home for the aged in Bialystok in, in the 1930s, perhaps even earlier in the 1920s. So all the mosaic has been done, all the grouting has been done. The only thing remaining for me to do, two, two things are all kind of construction related. I have to buy plexiglass, cut it to shape of the drawing, insert it there on top of the drawing, and then build another frame with lots of uh, pieces of wood that will cover the uh, white border areas here. Uh, and this kind of curved and rectilinear uh, uh, shape of the outer uh, figure of the uh, drawing. The drawing's ink and gouache, type of watercolor, colored pencil, and there's also five pieces of uh, an old drawing I did in uh, Retro Poland in 1984, uh, which was uh, part of a larger artwork which was disassembled in 2010. So there you have it for now. And we also have better light here in the morning, so I think this will show up better than the video I posted yesterday. <clears throat> Trouble in River City, actually. I uh, had been working on the inside frame to seal in the uh, drawing under the plex. But then I decided it was, had too many separate pieces, so I decided to go ahead and cut the plexi first and to keep it from being scratched I would cover it with this uh, uh, plastic which is protecting the drawing here and I've already um, gone through two pieces of plex 
uh, broken them. I have another piece here, but um, haven't decided whether, to, I'm not sure why. I had actually cut the uh, shaped plexi for the two pre prior mosaic drawing combos with no trouble at all. But maybe I'm uh, using the wrong blades, and now I'm wary about breaking the third piece, which I have in a carton over here. This is the second. I can't afford to go through all these pieces of plexi. So I may hire a uh, former building resident who lives elsewhere now, who's a carpenter, and uh, pay him to do that so I can get this finished, retrieve my uh, dining table and drawing table. So we'll see. To be continued. It is August 29th, 2014. There you have it. All right. September 9th, 2014, back to the grind. Thanks to a uh, uh, friend, Karen, of the 1980s, gave me a lift twice. Uh, about a half hour commuting each way, so that was two hours of commuting. If I'd done it by bus, it would have been an hour and a half, three, six hours of commuting. So thank you, Karen. Then, uh, then the plexiglass didn't fit, I discovered. Uh, a while ago, and uh, I uh, had to trim a whole number of edges down. Put the old saw in action again. Uh, managed to get just a few little cracks, but and broke off one small piece somewhere. But fortunately, well, here it is, the missing piece. It's a square here, and I'll be able to cover that with a piece of wood and finish constructing the inside frame. So. Uh, I see this is going to be a very laborious process again. I seem to forget how laborious it is each time. Um, but so what I'm doing, peel this off, you can see my great-grandmother's head, Zlata. So we've got the outside frame, the drawing is inserted, the plex on top of that. And now I'm constructing the pieces of wood to fit. Uh, each one needs to be kind of glued and some screwed down um, that kind of protects the uh, drawing as if it was let's say like a regular rectangular or square you know drawing in a picture frame where you have a uh, plexiglass covering it so anyway to be continued Let's see if i can get this done uh, by actually if i get it done by friday i'll be thrilled okie doke there you have it
It's much better than in my apartment doing this. <laughs>